Welcome to Revival Time Hub, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. Amen. Ghana, Taco Radi, I'm happy again to be here. Thank you. Very happy to be here. And I saw so many people outside. Can I ask those who are outside to shout hallelujah? Amazing. Let's give them a big God bless you. Big God bless you. Hallelujah. Bishop, thank you so much. You and your dear wife appreciate the graciousness. I appreciate everyone. And to the fathers in the land, I truly honor you. I appreciate every single one of you. May not know you by name, but I honor you deeply and I honor you sincerely. And for every man and woman of God here represented, everyone worthy of honor, um, we honor you very deeply in the name of Jesus. God has granted us the privilege. Oh, by the way, let's celebrate. That is my first time listening to him. I've sang his song, but it's an incredible, what's his name again? MOG, please. Incredible, incredible. God bless you. Hallelujah. I was, I was so blessed just hearing him lead worship, and I knew that this was someone who truly loved the Lord. Truly loved the Lord. May God bless you. Hallelujah. We're here tonight to experience the glory, the grace, the power of God. And I want you to know that there are no limits when God decides to visit his people. And so let's open up our heart and receive that which can upgrade our lives. If you are ready, lift your hands passionately to heaven and ask the Lord for an encounter. Go ahead. passionately ask the Lord for an encounter the Bible says he sent forth his word his word he led them and delivered them from all their destruction someone is praying shabalako sabra debeleke paratusieta Take me to another level in the spirit, another level in power, another level of wisdom, another level of grace, another level of fire. Someone is praying. A man of God is desperately praying. A businessman is praying. Someone who desires to experience God at another level is praying. The Bible says, for everyone that asketh, receive it. Few more seconds, you're crying to the God of heaven. Give me an encounter. A destiny-defining encounter. For in Jesus' name we pray. Yahweh, our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh, yes we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh. My hope is Yahweh, Yahweh, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Spirit of the living God, we pray that you would help us tonight. We're gathered tonight to be changed. We're gathered tonight to be transformed. I pray in the name of Jesus that your word will come with power. Let it liberate, let it transform, let it empower. And to Jesus be all the glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Please be seated. Please be seated. Am I clear enough? Can you hear me? 
those outside can you hear me okay god bless you i need to know that you're hearing me i have profound respect for the word of god because i have by the message of god learned the value of the word of god as far as a man's becoming is concerned as far as a man's transformation is concerned god's method has always and will always be the word of god god's method to lift is through his word god's method to bless is through his word god's method to heal to deliver to empower to set free is through his word and every time you receive the word of god you also receive every blessing that comes with the word every time you reject the word you also reject the blessings that come with the word hallelujah there are benefits to receiving the word the word as a person and the word as the thinking of God the Bible says bless the Lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name then it says bless the Lord O my soul and forget not his benefits there are benefits who forgiveth thine iniquity who heal your your diseases who delivers your soul from destruction crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies who satisfies you with good things so that you are renewed like the eagle there are benefits to receiving the word and I'm praying for you that every benefit connected to the prophetic word you are about to hear may it rest upon your life that what you will receive tonight will not just be an information what you will receive tonight will not just be intelligent communication but that you will receive the spirit and the life that comes with the word if we're together shout a loud amen. amen I'm teaching tonight on a series that will span to our final session tomorrow in light with your theme the path of the just the path of the just Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18 the path of the just tonight through this teaching you'll be receiving words that will transform you you'll be receiving instructions in righteousness that if and when adhered to will upgrade your life evidently may that be your portion in Jesus name let's read together can you see it projected all right one to go but the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day one more time but the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day that means in god's mind no believer should ever have a better yesterday are we together now god has so designed that when you are in Christ and when you walk with him every day should be a higher experience a higher experience of exploits a higher experience of greatness a higher experience of transformation rising up today and going down tomorrow is inconsistent with God's will it's inconsistent with God's desire for the believer the Bible very clearly here tells us that the path of the just not the path of every man the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more brighter and brighter unto the perfect day so advancement is God's desire for everyone incremental greatness is God's desire for everyone that it should never be based on God's thinking and based on God's expectation that you have to look back into yesterday simply because your tomorrow is pale and frail in glory the glory that God has invested upon the believer is the glory that excels did you hear what I just said that the glory that God has invested upon the believer is the glory that excels that means God expects increase advancement progress in every aspect of your life I'm reminded of Exodus chapter 14 and verse 15 this is a nation of Israel standing before the Red Sea and the Bible says Moses went to the Lord and was crying because now he was in limbo he was confused 
they were stagnated the red sea was before them and pharaoh and his armies were behind them to get them back into slavery and hear what the lord said unto moses wherefore criest thou unto me speak to the children of israel that they go forward that means in god's mind not the red sea nor any obstacle should stop the believer from making advancement and let me prophesy to someone already in the name of jesus the son of the living god i speak to you go forward go forward i'm only speaking to a receiver go forward go forward in ministry go forward in destiny in the name of jesus the bible says by you i can run through a troop it says by my god i can leap over a wall can you imagine that moses is going to god as a responsible leader you're leading over 2.5 million people and there is a red sea before you there is an angry army before you and god acts as if he does not see the obstacles he said tell the people that they go forward Tell them that they go forward in spite of the economic situation. Tell them that they go forward in spite of the presence of demons and curses and yokes. Tell them that they go forward in spite of limitations around ministry in Ghana. Tell them that they go forward. That means in God's mind, there is no excuse whatsoever for stagnation. Are we together? There is no excuse whatsoever. Tell the people that they go forward because the path of the just, whether that just is a man of God, a businessman, a student, an individual, a family person, the Bible says in your divine ordination, your path should always be glorious. Every attack on your destiny that wants to ensure that you go, go forward every attack that wants to make 2023 better than 2024 in the name of jesus i declare those obstacles give way now those obstacles give way now those obstacles give way now please be seated tell the people that they go forward someone prophesy to yourself say go forward you are speaking go forward say myself go forward no you have camped around this level of anointing go forward you have camped around this level of grace go forward grace can be multiplied influence can be multiplied power can be multiplied wisdom can be multiplied stature can be multiplied tell yourself go forward go forward in ministry higher levels of grace higher levels of power higher levels of spiritual illumination Tell the people that they go forward. They go forward. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. The Bible says, speaking about Jesus, our pattern man. Jesus came as a model of God's expectation for the believer. And the Bible says, Jesus increased. Not even Jesus violated that order of growth. Jesus increased in wisdom increased in stature increased in favor with god and with men one more time prophesy say myself go forward say it again myself go forward oh yes go forward for the sake of those connected to your grace go forward for the sake of your children go forward for the sake of all the souls connected to your apostleship connected to your bishopric go forward go forward in spite of the obstacles go forward in the name of jesus please sit down i receive i manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see jesus lifted up exalted i receive i manifest your power and your wisdom 
Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. Listen, for someone at the end of this conference, in the name of Jesus Christ, you will search for your former self and you will not find it again. You will search for your weak self, your prayerless self, your wordless self, your carnal self. There will be a transition in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. The path of the just is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter. Now let me your attention please. Hallelujah. There is a law that controls advancement in the spirit, advancement in the kingdom, advancement in destiny. I need you to hear this. In as much as it is God's desire for you and I to make progress, his desire and intent for you does not guarantee that it will happen in your life. There are many things God desires for his people that may not be captured in their experience because the kingdom operates based on laws and principles. Job chapter 38 and verse 33, it says, Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? And canst thou establish the dominion thereof upon the earth? NLT and I think NIV says, Do you know the laws of the heavens? Do you know the laws of the universe? Can you use them to regulate the earth? That means heaven is the way it is, not just because of the presence of God. There are ordinances, there are laws, there are mysteries, there are principles that make heaven the way it is. And the Bible says you are able to trap those laws, to import them to your space and reproduce heaven within your space. It says thy kingdom come by your will being done in earth as it is in the heavens. Are we learning now? So in as much as we have established the fact that it is God's desire that we make incremental progress spiritually first and then across every area of life, you will be surprised how many believers who love Jesus, how many believers who serve Jesus and may never come into the reality of advancement, of glory, of greatness. And the reason for that is why I want to teach you tonight. There is a law that governs advancement. You don't just grow in ministry. No, you engage laws that translate to growth. You don't just grow in your finances. Desire is important, but not enough. The price for advancement will demand more than desire. The Bible says through desire, a man having separated himself, seeket and intermeddled with every kind of wisdom. Desire is the starting point, but it cannot end just with desire. So you hear many believers tell you, I want to see the glory of God. Maybe a pastor in ministry, I want to walk in greater levels of the anointing, signs and wonders, increase in ministry. But not many are able to step into that experience. And in discussing this subject, the Lord placed it very strongly upon my heart to discuss with you some of the keys that are responsible for making advancement in fact really just one of them for tonight are you ready it's called the power of decisions the power of decisions the power of decisions joshua chapter 24 please and verse 15 someone's life is about to change joshua chapter 24 and verse 15 but if you refuse to serve the lord then choose today is that kjv let's leave it at kjv choose ye this day it says whom ye will serve whether the gods of your fathers or the ones you met at the other side but i like what joshua said but as for me and my house i have made my choice 
that I will serve the Lord. The command is choose ye this day. Choose ye this day. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 30 please and verse 19. Very profound revelation. Let's read it together. We can read this together. Ready? One, two, go. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live. Now look at this scripture very carefully. The first thing we learn here is that whatever you end up choosing affects beyond you. The Bible says choose life. You are the one who makes the decision but the consequences that follow that decision go beyond you. It says you and your seed may leave. If you choose death, you and your seed will die. If you choose poverty, you and your seed will be poor. If you choose mediocrity and spiritual carelessness, you and your seed, immediately you learn that decisions go beyond the individual who made the decision. That it affects those around you, those connected to you. Your seed here does not just refer to your biological children alone. Everybody who is within the circumference of your destiny is implicated by your decision. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. I have set before you a life of glory and beauty and color or a life of pain and regret and mediocrity. I have set before you an opportunity to excel in ministry, an opportunity to bring great glory to the name of the Lord. I have set before you an opportunity to carry a mighty anointing or an opportunity to wallow in jealousy, pain and mediocrity. I have set before you blessing and cursing, life and death. I can only advise you I will not force you. Now look up please. I was teaching somewhere before coming into Ghana and one of the things I taught them is that God gave man an ability that no other creature of his has and that ability is the power to use your will to redefine your destiny. This privilege to use your will consciously intelligently and redefine your destiny is an ability and a privilege that God gave only man now pay attention because not every one of God's creature is called man there is a condition for God's creature to be called man I taught them that number one for you to be called man you must be a spirit if you are not a spirit, you cannot be called man. Number two, that spirit must be domiciled in a body. If that spirit is not in a body, a body that was framed using the materials of earth, you cannot be called man. Number three, that spirit must be connected to the solical faculties of will, emotion, and intellect. Until these tripartite factors coexist within the same entity, you cannot call that entity man. Hmm. Are we together? So it's a privilege and an honor to be called man. Not just a creature, man. The heaven of heaven belongs to the Lord, but the earth hath he given, not to all of his creature, the children of men. Are we together? The dominion mandate was not given to all of God's creature. It was given to man. So the Bible says, what is man that thou art mindful of? Not the son of man that thou visitest him. The entire economy of the spirit revolves around this entity called man. In fact, the Bible puts it this way, that the earnest expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. Not the creatures of God, the sons of God. No matter how healthy other creatures are, if man does not rise to his potential, God's program cannot happen. Man. Are we learning already? So there's God gave man 
a will and listen carefully with that will he gave you the ability even at the detriment of your eternal destiny to make choices that goes against his will and he will respect it this is profound I don't know if I would have been able to take that kind of risk if I were God I would not build a creature that has not been tested and give that creature such profound privilege that the creature has the power to even fight its creator and the creator will respect it are we together we build cars we build apps but we make sure those apps are obedient there is usually something that compels obedience you can shut it down you can tame animals you can tame every other thing but God gave man will the will listen carefully that you can use that will and look the God of creation and say I make my choice to reject you and he will respect you as powerful as God is as mighty as God is as unlimited as God is he has bound himself to respect the will of man that means when God speaks it does not come to pass until man says amen listen to me and the amen there is not what you say at the end of your prayer my definition of amen is every participation to demonstrate to God that you have connected your will to his desire so God can say I desire to lift you but are you interested you can choose and say I am not interested and he will respect you even at the expense of your pain listen do you know the Bible says from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain Jesus came and died the price for sin destruction is already paid but ladies and gentlemen how many of you know that there are still people going to hell today in spite of the finished work of Christ that will is that powerful that man can look the king of glory in spite of his substitutionary sacrifice and they can choose I make up my mind to reject you and he will respect it I'm saying this to you because most believers do not know that destiny actualization is not just a function of God's will or God's power alone there is a major component to your becoming your rising that most men have ignored is called the power to choose the power to choose your life up until now is a summation of your choices whether they are choices that were made intelligently and intentionally or choices that were products of neglect you will be learning shortly if you truly desire an upgrade in your life then you must understand the power of decisions because everything in the realm of the spirit including demons including causes including yokes they depend on this factor to work hmm. if your salvation depends on your will causes also depend on your will blessings also depend on your will prosperity depends on your will poverty depends on your will whether you are aware or not is a different thing altogether that means there is a way you can choose that even if poverty comes it cannot work because your will fights it there is a way you can choose that prayerlessness the spirits that kill the prayer life of people when it comes you don't have to drive it your will becomes a defense it, it renders it impotent the will of man are we learning now the difference between any two people in the kingdom is not God's desire for the same Lord is rich unto all the Bible says the difference between a champion and a mediocre 
the difference between an anointed person and an unserious Christian, the difference between a trailblazer and a mediocre is not the power of God necessarily, it's not even the desire of God for them. It is that one person, either through mentorship or by the mercy of God, has learned among many other factors the power of decisions and has used his will to redefine the possibilities of his destiny. Whereas another person is waiting for chance, superstition, and all kinds of things. Satan dreads men who understand the power that has been given to them, the ability to choose. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Your decisions, I wrote here, beyond your conditions, decide the quality of your life. Your decisions, more than your conditions, decide the quality of your life. It's important you understand this. Your decisions, more than your conditions, your condition is as temporal as the strength of your decisions. Because if you have the power to choose, then you have the power to change. Did you hear what I said? If you have the power to choose, you have the power to change. Every condition remains permanent, as permanent as your indecision. If you have the power to choose, you have the power to change. Amazing how an unbeliever with one use of this will can become a believer immediately by agreeing to receive Jesus. Isn't it amazing? One lazy, careless, unserious person can make a decision and get into a bookstore and by the power of that choice, in one month, that person's destiny can change. One person can choose to pursue the anointing with humility. Another person can remain in pride and their possibilities can be east and west. Your destiny is at the mercy of this mystery God gave you. The power to choose. You will be amazed at how many great things have knocked at the door of your destiny. But you rejected them not knowing you rejected them. The Bible says as many as received him. That means you can reject him. As many as received. It says ye shall receive power. That means you can reject power. The Bible says buy the truth and sell it not. Your decisions more than your conditions decide the quality of your life. Now look at me please. Decisions do not carry the same weight in the spirit. There are certain decisions called destiny defining decisions. For instance, I can choose to wear what I'm wearing now. I would have chosen to wear black. It doesn't necessarily affect my destiny that much. It's not a destiny defining decision. But there are certain decisions that carry so much weight that you may not even have a chance to make another corrective decision again. All decisions do not weigh the same in the spirit. All decisions do not weigh the same in destiny. Are we together now? Decisions decide destiny. Now let me tell you something else about decisions. Let me your attention. Every decision has a consequence connected to it. You are not given the liberty to choose consequences. You cannot choose consequences. The consequences are automatically connected to the decision. Are we together now? What God gives you the power to do is to make the choices. But once you have made the choices, you are also prepared to receive the consequences that come with the choices. Are we together? So if I decide, for instance, do you know that as anointed as God has helped me to be, I actually can end my life in the next 10 minutes. That is how powerful the will is. I literally, with all the angels protecting me, I can choose that I want to end my life in 10 minutes. And God in heaven, the giver of life, will respect that choice. And in exactly 10 minutes, I will be dead. 
That is how powerful it is. The power to choose. To choose a great tomorrow or the power to choose a worse tomorrow resides within every one of you who is looking at me right now. The difference between you and everybody you admire is the strength of their decisions over time and the consequences that have come to honor that decision. Let me take it again. The difference between you and anyone at all you have ever admired is not necessarily the grace of God, it's not necessarily the love of God, for the same Lord is rich unto all that call upon him. It is that they by grace have understood this gift God gave man and have utilized it effectively. And what you call results are the consequences connected to the decisions they have made. To walk in integrity is a choice. To be crooked is a choice. To be perverse is a choice. To walk in righteousness is a choice. To be responsible is a choice. To be careless is a choice. To be prayerless is a choice. To be prayerful is a choice. To be anointed is a choice. To be mediocre in the spirit is a choice. To be a great man of God is a choice. To be one who does not bring much glory is a choice. To fail in life is a choice. To succeed is a choice. To be a champion is a choice. To be a great prophet is a choice. To be a mighty battle axe is a choice. To be wealthy is a choice. To be poor and beggarly is a choice. Can I continue? To cut short your life is a choice. A choice that many people do not know how to make. And to live long is a choice. To stay healthy is a choice. To be sick until you die is a choice. To give in to curses and yokes is a choice. To stand in the victory that Christ has wrought for you is a choice. To be in this program this night was a choice. Where were all the demons when you were coming here? That is how powerful your will is. That in spite of Satan's desire, he could not stop you nor the car. So why will your destiny, if you left home and nothing stopped you from getting here, why do you think you cannot get to the place of destiny? Are you learning now? It's a choice. You had a right to do something else with your time. It's called your time. And you decided to invest it in your destiny. It's a choice. It's a choice. The man of God had a right to stop this program from happening this year. It was not just God's will. It was also a choice. Are we together now? My traveling to come here was a choice. And there are consequences. Your transformation is part of the consequences of that decision. Your healing is part of the consequences of that decision. Listen, let me tell you this. If you don't understand my message, many years after now, you will look back and you will hate yourself because you will see that you cheated your destiny and allowed things to just happen like that. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory, the lifter up of my hand. I found myself singing this song from place to place. It's a revelation to me that God gave me this kind of power over my destiny. I can rewrite my story. It doesn't matter where I came from. You didn't choose your arrival, but you can choose your destination. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. The power to choose is a miracle that men do not understand the extent, the extent of risk God took to give man the power to choose. 
Apostle, but how come another person is greatly celebrated across the globe and then another person is left? I'm sure God just wanted to show him mercy. The Bible says, come boldly. Everyone has access to the same place. It is a choice. Listen, isn't it amazing that two brothers from the same family, raised by the same parents, under the same condition, negative or positive, but the outcomes of their destinies can be east and west. What is the difference between Jacob and Esau? God? No. What was the difference between Cain and Abel? God? Satan? Choice. The difference between this version of you now and the version that the nations is waiting for is not time, it's choice. There is a version of you in you that if you allow yourself to make serious this teaching tonight, you will mold like a snake, opening your old shelf and allowing a new you to evolve in power, in wisdom, in grace. That is the version the nations will glorify God for. But for as long as you sit and remain and hope that things will change, I hope I will be blessed one day. I hope my children will fear God one day. I hope I will be healed one day. No, sir. No, sir. I'm sure one day I will be anointed. No, sir. I made a statement back at home. I said revivals have no dates the day the vessel is prepared that is the day revival comes the day God heals you is not the day he wants to heal you is the day you have heard the word of faith or the day you decided to act or the day a vessel yielded enough to carry grace that can bring you healing arrived many things that we blame God for God has no hand in it. He's created a system that if you are not enlightened enough to understand and to engage, you may remain mediocre forever. You called it an upgrade. This is what God is doing. Showing you what you have neglected that Satan has been helping you use. Because you kept it down and Satan found it. Such a treasure and he's been helping you choose by manipulating your mind helping you choose by manipulating your understanding helping you choose by planting tears planting all kinds of things and you find your life nose diving moving in a direction you do not want and you are wondering who is making these choices for me man of God the difference between the dream you have seen of you healing people and doing mighty things and the you actually entering that experience is a choice. For instance, a choice to come for a prophetic convergence like this because you know grace can be available to rewrite your possibilities. It is a choice. It is a choice. To be humble to receive is a choice. To be arrogant to act like you have the results when you don't is a choice and all of them have consequences is someone learning when I found out that my destiny does not just depend on God but it depends on my ability to use this gift I rejoice with God and I made up my mind I said I found my key I can choose when I'm weak I can use that power to choose to call for help call on to me prayer is proof of humility I can use my will and call upon the Lord to come and help me because the Lord is nigh them that call upon him not them who are in trouble is someone learning listen let me tell you the truth great organizations today please sit down have been built on account of the correct usage of this divine gift let me give you two definitions 
of what it means to choose. Number one, to choose means to settle on an option in the midst of many options. To settle on an option. Whatever becomes the basis of that conclusion is up to you. But to choose means to finally settle a resolve to settle on an option in the midst of various options. And the first law of effective decision is to be aware of all the decisions available alongside the consequences they carry. Is someone learning now? When you make choices in ignorance, it's the same thing as allowing the devil choose for you because you will choose disaster. You want to make effective choices, you have to be aware if you serve me a buffet, usually I would go around and look at everything that is available. Am I right on that? So there's rice here, maybe pasta, and you tell me there's salad, there's whatever. Then I can choose using various parameters. Maybe whatever health program I'm currently working on, or my appetite at the moment, or the recommendation that anyone gives me. Are you seeing that now? There can be various parameters, but at the end of it, usually, as wonderful and delicious as other meals on the tables, I, I may not even touch some of them. There are those who will just take fruits and the basis for that decision is that they don't eat when it's late. They have made a choice. Are there consequences to their choices? Yes. There are those who will eat everything on that table and add more. Is that a choice? Yes. Are there consequences to that decision? Hmm. Am I right on that? When an armed robber leaves his house and goes to rob another person, the same energy it takes to rob is the same energy it takes to think. The man would have converted that energy to think by the spirit and come up with a solution that still empowers him with dignity. Look at the creativity deployed in stealing. The timing, the courage, the mastery of the environment, learning the weaknesses of those you are going to steal from. Th these are already business principles there. And yet the person decides to invest those principles to steal. It's a choice. Let me tell you how powerful the power to choose is. Have you heard of the story of a young man called the prodigal son? The Bible says that gentleman was now with the swine. He never says the Holy Spirit spoke to him. By himself, he says he came to himself. Men can come to themselves. The Bible does not say the Holy Spirit convicted him. The gentleman sat down, thought intelligently, started weighing the options. Option one, to have remained at home. The choice to submit to the authority of my father and enjoy the blessings that follow that estate. The choice to have lived a riotous life with friends who are no longer here. And he said, how many hired servants has my father? And I am here destined for greatness and glory. I have been so famished and depleted. I now feed with the swine. And he said, no, if I chose to be here, I can choose to go back. Many things left that gentleman. His money left him. His friends left him. But the power to choose remained. Can I tell you? Every time you say, I have nothing, you lied. There is one thing that never leaves you. There is one thing that no cost can take away. There is one thing no enchantment can take away. I know you lost your job, but not your power to choose. I know you lost ministry, but not the power to choose. I know you lost character, but not the power to choose. For as long as the power to choose remains, every other thing that left you can return. Are you learning? So the gentleman came to himself. Let me show you how he chose. He said, I will arise. An act of my will. Are we still here tonight? I will arise 
and go to my father and when I get to my father I will still use this gift again and tell him father I have sinned against you and against heaven I am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your slaves and he got up and began to walk Satan notwithstanding I will go forward my yesterday notwithstanding I will go forward my prayerlessness of yesterday notwithstanding I can start afresh today rather than regretting yesterday are we together can I tell you the same time it used to regret and waste your time discussing your issues and limitations is the same time it takes to make up your mind and use this gift God gave you Apostle I just discovered as a man of God I do not know many things about ministry you have done well but you can start from where you are he told Abraham from where thou art not where you want to be from where you are your feet cannot go there but your eyes can go round he says look northwards southwards eastwards westwards as far as your eyes can see hallelujah sometimes I look at my photos and I look at my notes of yesteryears and I see some of the things I wrote there and I laugh sometimes I think to myself and I say my God the power to choose is so powerful I remember when I wrote a few things many years ago that I'll have the honor of traveling around the world bringing the gospel the life the power of God it would be a joke that those days but those days have become today the difference it's not just the will of God the difference is not that Satan has stopped being determined to destroy God's purposes it is the power of this gift tonight God wants to repackage that gift and give someone that you have been crying around saying I don't have a job nobody likes me there is a choice you can make people like you again it's a choice I don't it doesn't look like I hear from God it's a choice because everything that makes for greatness is learnable everything are we learning now my first assignment tonight is, is to provoke you to see that where you are now you've been given flimsy excuses he says ye have compassed this mountain long enough for God's sake someone God is telling you by now you should already be speaking to people prophetically by now you should be healing the sick but you are still at a level giving flimsy excuses and getting angry blaming Satan will not do you good even if he's had a role to play his role was empowered by your poor decisions or indecisions and that's what empowered him to remain there is someone learning tonight in one minute before I now begin to show you a few things that you may do with your life please lay your hands on your head and begin to pray in the spirit from this day forward my life must change someone use this gift from this day forward I take advantage of the supply of grace but from this day forward someone pray from this day forward my music ministry must take another dimension helping me to serve God at a greater level from this day forward this apostolic ministry this prophetic ministry must scale heights in the spirit for the sake of kingdom efficiency from this day forward my finances must change from this day forward from this day forward someone pray use this gift that God gave you the part of the just shines brighter but at the mercy of your power to choose hallelujah praise the name of the Lord please be seated hmm. it
takes your decisions to fail in life and it takes your decisions to succeed in life hmm. let me tell you this the major way causes and demonic operations work is to manipulate this gift did you hear what I said the major way causes work is not to veto you is to manipulate your power to choose so that you make poor or ill decisions that attract negative consequences to your life they depend on that power that is why causes cannot work for a dead man that is why blessings cannot work for a dead man because the factor that gives them power is gone the power to choose is only there when life is there that's why the Bible says there's hope for the living he that is joined to the living lose everything but the one thing God gave you if it is still there you can get back again people have lost billions of dollars billions and millions of dollars and they sat back in trouble but they said I will get back again and they got back again are we together now there are people who have had their homes washed away by flood and while others were rejoicing someone else was saying the same wisdom that brought it is still there I will arise again someone say I will arise prophesy say I will arise one more time say I will arise stop giving the flimsy excuse that you've not got a job since you were a graduate I don't mean to insult you I'm being harsh on you for a reason an upgrade desires a stretch if I don't stretch you you will not rise for as long let me tell you this mediocrity always thrives on excuses a justifiable reason my father was a drunkard my mother was a prostitute such a sad story I sympathize with you but what are you going to make out of your life from that point isn't it amazing that the excuses that most believers give justifying their lives I was abused when I was young now I don't downplay your pain but how old are you now are we together how old are you now someone defrauded me in 2010 for God's sake what what is today's date 2024 do you know from the time you started regretting that was the day someone made up his mind and by now they've caught up with destiny someone be angry say I will arise <laughs> say it again I will arise <laughs> God has called me into the music ministry you may say let me see how you are using your gift to rise and scale not just the gift of singing the gift of a will that when others are sleeping you are waking up praying in the night you are using your will you are rewriting your own possibilities that's how he sang his song oh be lifted above all other gods we lay our crowns and worship you be lifted Above all other gods, we lay our crown and worship you. Oh, glorious God, we praise your name. We lay our crown. Let me use him for an instance when the spirit of revelation was resting it was not on only him it rested on someone who snored away an opportunity to have written a song to slept it over and said I will think about it one day whereas someone got up and said this is it only one line of the song I will start from there it's a seed enough are we together church is quiet tonight God's word is coming as a rod shaking away every excuse for some of you by now 
you should be doing business at a transcontinental scale with the kind of intelligence God gave you. But again, last year I had the honor of speaking at the World Conference here in your nation of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship. And I remember speaking to them and challenging them that in as much as we have seen so much, there is always more. In Revelations, he said, come up here and I will show you. He already had revelations from chapter 1, 2, 3, 4. But he said, come up here. Come up here. Is someone getting angry? You have wasted the opportunity to rewrite and redefine your destiny. But there's no point regretting because that gift is still with you. You lost things but not the power to choose. You lost men, but not the power to choose. You lost opportunities, but not the power to choose. Let me tell you the truth. The next time you see someone saying, I've lost everything, tell him, hey, why didn't you come for this prophetic conference? Let me be a lecturer. God shielded the power to choose such that the only way to lose it is when you are dead provided you are alive there is no enchantment there is no spirit that can take away from you the power to choose hallelujah hallelujah is someone learning please sit down please sit down let me show you a few things very quickly and then we'll pray the real value of wisdom, write this down. The real value of wisdom is in its ability to help you make superior decisions. The real value of wisdom is not the acquisition of information. The real value of wisdom is that you gather together the factors that help you to make superior destiny defining decisions don't tell me you are wise show me if you are wise when it has to do with wisdom you don't say I am wise you show it by the superiority of the decisions that come from the information you have or claim to have so if you claim you are wise and I do not see superior decisions that is why wisdom goes hand in hand with mighty works are we together now now I want to give you seven decisions that you must make with your life seven destiny defining decisions I give you a guarantee by the authority of Scripture if you pay attention to these seven decisions, I assure you, whether you are here in this auditorium or outside or following online, for some of you, it's in a matter of days, you will see an upgrade that will surprise you. Seven decisions. I told you not all decisions carry the same weight. Remember that? By the privilege of God's grace, the honor of mentorship, and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, I have distilled seven decisions that a man must make with his life. It doesn't matter whether you are called into ministry, business, family, a student, a career person. If you do not make these seven decisions well, your life is doomed to fail. Are you ready? Open my eyes, oh God. Someone pray in one minute. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. For the sake of my tomorrow, for the sake of those connected to this grace. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm going to run through this list. For every one of these decisions I mentioned, I will not have the time to teach elaborately on it, but when I touch on it, we are going to pray it into our lives. Is that a good deal? So I mentioned number one, you pray. 
if you are not praying, know it's an attack. Remember I told you prayerlessness is a choice. So once we mention it, you pray with all your heart. This is it. I'm finding my roadmap out of a life of mediocrity. For some of you, after tonight's service, you will look Satan to the face and say, so this is how powerless you are. I did not know that you are as powerful as my indecision. But now that I have chosen to use this gift God gave me, Number one, what is the first decision you must make in your life? You desire to rise to a new dimension, to rise to a new level in ministry, in career. The first decision every man must make consciously is the decision to make exceptional spiritual progress. The decision to make exceptional spiritual progress. If you're writing, underline the word exceptional, please. The decision to use your life, to use your days, to make exceptional spiritual progress. To know the Lord, to love the Lord, and to serve Him with all your heart. It is a choice. It is a choice. To be serious with God is a choice. To love Jesus passionately, whether you are in ministry or not, it's a choice. The decision to plunge yourself into everything pro-kingdom is a choice. And recall I told you that you do not choose consequences. You make decisions and to the degree to which they are superior, they attract superior consequences to your life like the anointing, like wisdom, like grace, like favor, like open doors. These are the benefits that come with knowing and loving the Lord. Second Chronicles 26 and verse 5. Let's hurry up. Second Chronicles 26 and verse 5. The Bible says, And he, the he there being Uzziah, sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. Let's read the final sentence together. Ready? One to go. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Who made him prosper? Make no mistakes about it. God makes men prosper. But he does that in honor to their decision. His own part was that he made up his mind to seek the Lord. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. God is still a maker. The Bible calls him the maker of the heavens and the earth. But he still makes men. He can make ordinary men like Joshua Selman and turn them to signs and wonders. He can make an ordinary person like you that by this time next year, when we come into Ghana, we'll say, are you not that sister that was quietly seated in that meeting? And you will say, well, I made a decision to serve the Lord. I made a decision to serve the God of heaven. And look the anointing he brought to my life. Look the power, look the favor, look the doors he's opened for me as for me and my house me and my destiny me and the vision God has given me we will serve the Lord it's a decision that means I have many options but I choose to serve the Lord someone tonight is your night of decision that right here, whilst you are sitting, you can say, I choose to serve Jesus. I have other options. I can get into traditional practice and do a lot of demonic things. I can get into occultism. It's an option. I can get into just believing in myself without God. But I choose as an act of my will. I use this gift to serve the Lord. The Bible says, except the Lord builds a house. They labor in vain that build it. Is that still in your Bible? Except the Lord watches over a city. Beloved people, it says the watchmen watch it, but in vain. It is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late at night. Only to eat the bread of sorrow, but he giveth his beloved sleep. Say, I choose to serve the Lord. Shout it convincingly. Say, I choose to serve the Lord. I choose to serve the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
It's a choice. So when someone looks at you and says, why are you always going to church? Tell them, because I chose to serve the Lord. Why are you a faithful worker in church? It's a choice. I was not manipulated. I was not coerced. It's a choice. Why do you love to read your Bible? It's a choice. Why do you love ministry? It's a choice. A choice. A choice. You have the power to choose. And don't get angry at my choice. Because I have a will. You have a will. If you see my results, don't envy. I use that gift. You can also use that gift. Are we together? chosen to love him with all my life I've chosen to serve him all my days it's not a choice because I'm a preacher it was the choice that made me a preacher look at me Bishop sir you will be amazed at how many people have not chosen to serve the Lord they found themselves in church. They were born by Christian parents and so they can't run away from church. Are we together? And they found themselves becoming youth pastors, choir director, and they are stuck with this burden called God. My one desire is that you be praised. That you be praised. That you be praised My one desire Is that you be praised That you be praised That you be praised Somewhere in the course of this service I'm going to give someone an opportunity Who desires to use this gift for the first time in this way to verbalize, vocalize, and act out your desire for Jesus. And when that time comes, do not harden your heart like you did not hear this preacher. Remember, you do not choose consequences. You make decisions. Your grandfather had a choice to serve Jesus, but he used his will to serve Satan. The result of this decision is the pain you've gone through from childhood to adulthood. Don't let your children go through the same thing because of your carelessness. That everything you came into, let your children not come into. You, you can be the bridge between yesterday and tomorrow. I came from a family of poverty, you say. I came from a family that served Satan. And I know what those causes did to me, you will say. But from this day forward, I make up my mind that everyone that comes after me will serve the living God. John 17 verse 3. This is life eternal, that they may know thee, the one true God, and Jesus, whom thou hast sent. Number two. Is someone learning? The second destiny defining decision that everyone under the sound of my voice must make tonight is the decision to be transformed. The decision to contend for a superior belief system. Write it down please. The decision to be transformed. The decision to be transformed. Whatever you want to say, Lord, you can say through me. Whoever you want to lift, Lord, you can lift through me. Whatever you want to change, Lord, you can change. That is the power of a transformed mind. That's what a transformed mind does. A transformed mind comes into partnership with the will of God. A transformed mind is how you tell God, Amen. That everything you have desired for me, let it flow through the lens of my transformation to my destiny. Listen, 
every result in the spirit is mindset belief system dependent prosperity belief system dependent poverty belief system dependent leadership belief system dependent mediocrity belief system dependent influence belief system dependent guess what the bible says it says romans chapter 12 from verse 1 i beseech thee brethren by the message of god he says that you offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto god holy and acceptable it calls it your reasonable act of service or worship then verse 2 says do not be conformed to this world is the Greek word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with this age it says but be ye transformed transformed the same process that transits an insect from egg larva pupa adult how many of you know that all of those four stages the insect does not look the same no the larva does not look the same as pupa there are things that the adult insect has that at a larva stage or a pupa stage does not have for instance the ability to fly are we together so the bible says be transformed in your transformation you will prove through your life that good acceptable and perfect will of god in your transformation philippians 2 verse 5 says let this mind be in you the word let means permit allow do not restrict do not restrain let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus Jesus did not just win because he was the son of God there was a mindset that kept victory in his life let me tell you the truth even if Satan is not in existence a poor mediocre mindset already tends to defeat hallelujah mindset the decision to be transformed let me have two people here two gentlemen two gentlemen you come and another one please come very quickly come one stand by my left the other stand by my right thank you watch this everybody so these are two people both born again they are saved are we together now when I come to you let's say this gentleman look at this He's saved, but he's not transformed. He's not known the value of things like honor. He's not known the value of things like responsibility and diligence. This man can see me and just brush his shoulder, and I have within my power to help him. This guy can recycle pain right now because of a law he violated. And it is the absence of transformation, not redemption. Redemption is there. But transformation was not there and he will still suffer as if he's not saved are we together whereas this gentleman because he came to church and in addition to his being saved he's learned the law of honor that when doors close they close because of dishonor to God to men and to principles this gentleman can see me and say good afternoon sir no stand up you don't have to kneel are we together good afternoon sir and I can look at him and say young man I, I this I mean you must have been mentored by a good pastor so what do you do oh I'm a graduate trusting God for a job can you do the work of a secretary you call it breakthrough in one minute a door opens now watch this the difference is not redemption they are both saved but this man either through structured mentorship or the responsibility of getting materials to transform his mind he's got a superior belief He's understood life. Are we together now? Now look up. I can give this gentleman a thousand dollars. I don't know how much that adds up to your Ghana CD, but a thousand dollars. Fifteen thousand Ghana CDs. Am I right? Well, 15 or 16 is around the same corridor. So now you look at me. So I'm giving this guy a $1,000. I'm giving this guy a $1,000. But because of transformation, he's learned to delay gratification. Are we together now? 
and rather than living a fake life he can take that thousand dollars out of it go to the bookstore and buy materials from people he may never meet physically but he can distill their ideas and use them like ladders towards a superior life he can take a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars from that and go and sow to a man of God and receive a prophetic blessing he can take a hundred dollars take it to his mother and say mama I may not have much but I know the value of honor please take this and bless me look at what he's doing with his thousand dollars this gentleman even though a church goer can waste the money like a prodigal son because he's not been educated enough to know that it is up to you what you do with it at the end of it through that thousand dollars this guy has a prophetic word a blessing wisdom he saved enough whereas this guy has destroyed every other thing both of them will come to God and they will ask him why did you succeed he will say God why did you fail he will say God both of them blame their results on God and God says no I gave both of you the same gift the power to choose you gathered information that helped you to choose wise that is the power of revelation and wisdom this man ignored wisdom and even in the midst of opportunity he still destroyed it maybe I just described somebody in this place right now you may be this man on your way towards a great destiny or this man any of these two depends on your determination to be transformed do not tell me I am born again the riches that are in this life you have received flows through a transformed mind if your mind is not transformed the potential of your being saved cannot be made manifest who is learning tonight are we together transformation it is part of transformation to know that getting materials to build your mind is better than getting clothes to live a fake life for now dress your mind and your mind will dress your body But dress your body and leave your mind. Your mind will have to strip the clothes on your body to cover its shame. The choice is yours. So you see someone who is at this point buying a Bible, buying materials, traveling from place to place, praying every day. This gentleman may be in one small room fasting and praying every time you meet him studying and you are like mr. man don't you enjoy your life he knows that every time does not provide every opportunity I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night comment on every man is someone learning now this is what you get when you come to church transformation you will walk out of this place right now and your friends who were your friends yesterday you are not even aware that they are no longer your friends now as you are seated now because something transformation has produced dissociation the next time they call you you will not have a common ground for discussion that's when you will know you have grown the things you were discussing yesterday your your priorities and your interests have been altered now while you hear them speaking on mediocre things gossiping about others you tell them you know what I really don't have that passion again and I don't mean to be rude I I have seen that if I waste this gift God gave me and I'm not ready to allow you make me waste that gift I want my child tomorrow to be able to say mommy thank you thank you for listening to this man of God you can be this man right here saved but not transformed no passion for the word no passion for truth no passion for destiny altering decisions or destiny altering information what do you know about leadership what do you know about organization what do you know about responsibility what do you know about success what do you know about victory what do you know about an excelling life what do you know about failure 
all of these have already been trapped and distilled in a man's pain the pain you want to go through, someone has gone through it for you and he took from his pain and put together a material that in 30 minutes can deliver you for the next 30 years is someone learning I made up my mind that I will not only be a preacher I will be a transformed preacher transform transform my brother my sister listen to me for some of you you are the first person right now in your family that God is counting on to rise don't disappoint destiny did you hear what I said don't disappoint destiny don't sit back and disappoint destiny once you are seated now imagine your children born or unborn imagine them saying mommy listen to this man listen to this man listen to this preacher but you can still use that wheel and say you know what he's talking nonsense I have made my own choice my own is to encourage you to make that choice thank you gentlemen the Lord honor you the decision to be transformed listen to me this night when you go back home write the various areas of your life where you know you are in ignorance and start pursuing knowledge go online this is the healthy use of internet huh run away from all these groups talking nonsense and wasting your time they are helping you choose in a demonic way that will destroy your life i love the lord as a man of god but my last compromise was because of finances I think I need to add financial knowledge so that I don't I, I don't start practicing things as a man of God I, I know my conscience tells me manipulating members is demonic but I need the money so what do you do you go and get a material God's financial system enter and the Holy Spirit who has seen your desire will navigate you to a message that has distilled all nonsense from sense and in five minutes you start a journey with dignity and from that decision you say I will be a preacher with integrity I will never manipulate anybody for gain maybe you are a father beating your wife every day even though you are praying in tongues it means there's something you do not understand take responsibility how to be a godly visionary father Spirit of God, I'm ignorant. I confess my ignorance, but I don't want this to be this way. Help me. And you will find one material. Oh, love your wife. This is this. This is that. And you can go back with humility. Honey, I'm sorry. You married an ignorant man, but he's no longer an ignorant man. I'm on a journey to transformation. Give me time. Give me one month. Encourage me while I'm doing that. And after one month, you have a man every garden you see that is well manicured was done by someone no garden fixes itself is someone learning you're a man of god but nobody's inviting you even though you are anointed you are anointed but you do not understand the protocol of honor and ethics you come to preach and perhaps lambast everybody insult every father of faith there and preach with your anointing and while you are preaching they are marking you with a red viral never invite this gentleman again never invite this gentleman again and you call it an attack it's lack of transformation it doesn't mean you are bad it just means you are not transformed who is God speaking to so enter a covenant am I wasting your time this is how to upgrade an old version of you is giving way for a new version of you now Apostle, but everybody who can bless me does not like me. Let me tell you why. Because all you do is call them, disturbing them to ask them for money. Nobody has that time to carry an extra luggage. Why don't you try this? Send them a text. Sir, just thinking about the last help you showed me in October last year, I just wanted to send a text to tell you I'm still grateful. God bless you. That's it. The man who reads that text, says my wife look at this now the Holy Spirit can walk upon their mind in honor to your transformation and say this lady in this day of perversion 
So there is a lady that can have this kind of discipline. Let's call and help her again. And the call comes. Whereas you would have been pleading for a thousand Ghana CDs, they will now give you 15,000 Ghana CDs by transformation. Because every time you are grateful, you make the person who gave you one to give again. Every time you are grateful, whether to God or to men, let me tell you, rather than begging, be grateful. It achieves the same result, but one carries honor and the other one carries this honor. When you are grateful, it's a way to ask for more without asking for more. Are we learning? Transformation. Learn to tell people thank you. I hope I'm not wasting your time. If we, wherever, if we stop, this, I didn't come to waste your time. I came to show you what you can see the result now, right now. You can know that you are changing. There are many of you, the simple reason why doors have closed is because you don't know how to say thank you. You will beg with a thousand text messages and say thank you with one word, thanks. And the person looks at your text and says, I will never help this person again. It's not an attack. It is calamity you bring upon yourself by not using your power to decide. Tonight, everyone here, you can make up your mind that as soon as we share the grace, I will find the five people who God has used to invest in my life in a way and send thank you to all of them. And they will call you and say, what for? You say, I came to church and I was mentored methodically that one of the ways I use my will is to contend for transformation. You'll be surprised you will invite someone tomorrow without saying come. Transformation. How about apologizing when you are wrong? Culture tells us when you are wrong, fight and act as if you are not wrong. Look at the trouble it has brought. Battles that are your concern and battles that are not your concern, you are still fighting them. Battles with no reward. I am sorry has sent nations to war. Lack of saying it, I'm sorry. Because we interpret I'm sorry as I am weak. I am sorry means I am so superior, I will not let my ego stop my advancement. There are marriages today that would, should not have broken simply because somebody was too proud to say I'm sorry. I'm sorry means I am better today than I was yesterday. We are human and we all make mistakes. Maybe I should teach you. Everybody say I'm sorry. One more time. You see how it's stinging your ego while you are saying it? Say it till it dies. Say I'm sorry. sorry. This is what it means to be transformed. Don't just look for anointing. Power, power, power. There is a place for that. But the value of power is that it is invested upon a transformed mind. When power is invested upon a mind that is not transformed, it's like pouring water in a container with holes. It will not retain. This is only two over seven. Imagine what happens when you make seven over seven. How could your destiny remain the same? Are you now seeing that you've been blaming God for many things? You are learning now by yourself that truly it is not God's fault. So I do not know this much. This is why you should honor your bishop and his wife for making this meeting happen because it has become the basis for your transformation. It's true. Please be seated. I have a few minutes, but let's see what we're able to do. Who is learning tonight? Transformation. Make up your mind. I will never shout foolishly at people again and say, that's how we are in our family. Change. Change. Nobody is like that. It's a lie. There is nobody who is temperous by default. You allow demon spirits to capitalize on your will. You can change. A soft answer turns away wrath. Apostle, you don't know me. As quiet as I am, when that thing comes on me, stop it from coming on you. Stop it from coming on you. Stop it from coming on you. Is someone learning what I'm saying? Stop it from coming on you. 
tell yourself i will be decent modest with words i will not be careless with my life again no the value of my spirituality will translate to my excellence it will be clear that i know god and i love god this is a way of a superior man transformation have i challenged someone enough so go back tonight no gossiping again block those pages get to work get to work if your friend calls you and says i have something tell her oh, well i'm sorry I'm, I'm on a project right now don't be offended i'm on a project the name of the project is advancement the name of the project is going forward the name of the project is upgrade let's hurry up number three let me see if I'm able to touch one or two more. Thank you. Number three, the third decision you must make. You want to upgrade your life. You want to use this gift God gave you. Is the decision to discover and fulfill your God-given assignment. The decision to discover and fulfill your God ordained assignment I'll not talk much here it's clear enough your God ordained assignment Hebrews 10 and verse 7 lo I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will O God it is written concerning every man there is a role you have to play in destiny do not rob your generation of an opportunity to experience God through your life, through the efficiency of your witness. Stop escorting others around the corridors of destiny. There is a place for you. Find it by the Spirit. My life changed many years ago. A dearly revered mentor, he's going to be with the Lord now. His book, Discovering Your Purpose, Dr. Miles Munro. I read that book and it revolutionized my life completely. Thank God that even though he's gone, his thoughts are still there. Go and buy the truth. Use humility as a currency. Buy the truth. And learn all you can about your destiny. Many people depend on your destiny. And many people are waiting for you to manifest. In your rising is their rising. Do not fail. Number four. The fourth decision. And I want everybody to listen carefully. A very major decision is the decision to be healthy and physically sound you will think this is just a passive decision that should not be mentioned in church if you are not healthy you will die let me tell you that I'm not prophesying do I'm telling you the laws and the consequences that follow are we together now please look up everyone is given the gift of one body Per lifetime one body per lifetime you don't have access to two it's not recorded in scripture one body per lifetime to hold to host your spirit and keeping that body healthy to host your spirit for as long as it would take to live your assignment is your responsibility are we together God will support you with his word with his spirit with his power with his grace but remaining healthy enough so that your spirit can live comfortably when your body deteriorates beyond a certain threshold your spirit will have to leave even if it's not your time make up your mind that I will be healthy if you're a man of God here let me encourage you in love there are many men of God today with all due respect who are sick because of carelessness with their bodies not their spirits their bodies are we together one of our doctors was telling me that many people today with kidney problems a major cause of the kidney problem is that they don't drink water they don't drink water are we together and you know in Africa sometimes we because of the backgrounds we came from when you get to a restaurant you take coca-cola and Fanta and chicken no water he said, give me three bottles. I've suffered. I've suffered in this life. So you are on a revenge mission. 
and as you gulp all those things remember the sons of the prophet said there is death in the pot even the pot can carry death you have to be aware of what you eat are we together you've heard my story for some of you during my retreats I take out time and I do an inventory of my life and one time I found out for three years in a row I wasn't necessarily sick but my health was the worst performing area in my life I was just not and you know because of the anointing when you see so much of healing and signs and wonders you feel guilty taking care of your body after all the power of the Holy Ghost is there do you know Elisha died do you know what killed Elisha the anointing remained while life left did you hear what I said the anointing remained on Elisha while life left don't cover that testimony that their life left but the anointing still remained on the dead body on the sick body till he died you can be very anointed and still die take care of your body I, I encourage my people I charge them in fact at the end of the year I insist upon them to go for a medical checkup you are a man of faith so what are you afraid of go for a medical checkup find out what in the world is going on in that body so that if there is a call for emergency you know how to appropriate God's power fast but living in denial until you deteriorate to a point where it depletes your finances your health other people will have to pack up their jobs to maintain you and eventually you still die is someone learning you will thank me for what you are learning you are calling it an upgrade for some of you nothing is wrong with your transformation but the level of carelessness with your body God is calling you to order right now you see young people 20 years 30 35 high blood pressure having all kinds of things what does a young man have to do with high blood pressure because of the careless use of this body this body is a gift use it well use it well use it well hallelujah so for someone you will be healed though in the name of Jesus you have any pain you are going to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ but you have a responsibility when God starts increasing you financially before you buy clothes invest in your health don't put clothes on a dying body no. and don't say it is lack of faith to go for a medical checkup doctor check me from head to toe please let me know what is wrong if the healing power is at work in you, medicine will show that you are all right. This headache that happens all the time, what is the cause? Oh, this and that and that. Adjust this, adjust that, adjust it. That's all. And you are free. Otherwise, you will keep driving it carelessly until one day you find out that you fell somewhere in the marketplace and they took you to the hospital. Which one is more embarrassing? To carry yourself to the hospital and be treated or to be carried to the hospital because what you are afraid of will still happen if you don't take your health seriously extend this talk to your parents and your loved ones let me tell you what a medical professor taught me sir he said after every 10 years cycle in your life the dynamics of living changes that means from 20 to 30 the dynamics of living changes 30 to 40 it changes 40 to 50 that means the strategy you deploy should be per 10 year cycle by the time you clock 40 you can't live like 20 again wisdom is profitable to direct you don't like what you're hearing health go back this night and make up your mind some of you need to go and get supplements responsible organic supplements while you are praying in tongues you tell yourself I wouldn't die my grandfather died it was witchcraft through carelessness but I will block that door the power of God will deal with the witchcraft while my will deals with the carelessness part that's the partnership that keeps you long that's why I told you longevity is a choice when you say you choose life you don't just say I choose life you make pro-life decisions 
This is what the church is about. You should be mentored in church that you go back home as a father and gather your family tomorrow and say, listen, as the priests of this home, I've come with a new resolution. We are going to be healthy in this family. Can the men say amen? amen? And then the women answer too and go back to the kitchen and did so many things in that kitchen and say in the name of Jesus, we will live long. Don't kill yourself because of what enters your mouth. Number five, we have to wrap up. Takoradi, you invited me to come and teach on upgrade. This is what it means to be upgraded. Decisions. Your health. Your health. Your health. Number six. Number what? Number five. The decision to be financially empowered. <laughs> Just write it. Many people shout like this and it still doesn't work. Just write it. The decision to be financially empowered. Let me tell you the truth. Look at me, beloved people. I love you with all my heart and I came to bless you. No matter what good happens in your life, if finance is not part of them, you will suffer. Whether you believe it or not, you just rest once and for all and don't even try to argue about it. If your finance is not working, eventually, even your spiritual life will be affected. Do you know what took Israel to Egypt? Hunger. Not witchcraft. Hunger. Hunger always takes Israel to Egypt. Genesis 42 from verse 1 and 2. The Bible says Jacob, even as a prophet, he heard, he saw that there was corn. Where? In Egypt. Corn was not the problem, the location. I hear that there is money, but that man is a very perverse man. So there's money, but the problem is the person and the location. And he looked upon his sons. Why do you look upon one another? Verse 2. Give us verse 2, media. Genesis 42 and verse 2. And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn. Where? In Egypt. He said, Get you down here and buy for us from there that we may live and not die. Without corn, you will die. Even if you are a prophet. Let me tell you, one of the enhancers of integrity is prosperity. One of the enhancers. There are many temptations that die naturally when God has shown you mercy financially. The strength of temptation is its seductive nature. That means it appeals to a need that is within you. But once that need has been overcome through the abundant help of God, it does not work again. Are we together now? If you bring me baby food now, and you say, Apostle, be tempted, you can't tempt me with it. Like what babies eat? Baby food. Or you put breast milk in a, a feeding bottle. I would think you brought it for me to pray on it. I will end up praying on it. It can't be a temptation. Are we together now? So temptations happen because they connect to a need. That's the character of the spirit of seduction. It looks for something you desire and then connects to it for your destruction. Make up your mind as a decision tonight that I will not be poor. Not by jumping carnally and oh, I like money, I'm obsessed about money. No, a responsible approach from a kingdom standpoint, knowing that lack of finances can push you to Sodom. I made up my mind that I will never manipulate anybody to come and preach. Number two, I made up my mind that I will never inconvenience any ministry telling them give me 10 naira or give me this. Mm -mm. It's an honor and a privilege to serve Jesus with all my heart. And before I came, he had been blessing people. And after I've gone, he will still raise people. Integrity is enhanced, listen to me, by prosperity. If you make up your mind that you will not prosper, you are doing a disservice to yourself 
your children and your children's children. There are many ladies today who should not have been prostitutes, but because of this finance thing. There are many young people, I don't know if it happens in Ghana, we have this thing in Nigeria where, you know, some of these are young boys, fraud and all of that. Does it happen here? In this place too? I hope you are not one of them. If you are one of them, you can choose. I taught you about choice. You can choose. Let me have your attention. Let me have your attention. Our time is up. The decision to be financially free. Can I be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen? The efficiency of your destiny, including ministry, is at the mercy of abundant financial resources. Don't be poor. Don't be poor. Make up your mind. I will not be poor. Now, there are those who say this. And it's simply the flesh. It's just carnality. That's not what I'm teaching you. Make up your mind. If you truly love Jesus, don't be poor. If you truly love your children, don't be poor. And don't allow mediocres bring words and say, don't worry, it doesn't matter. It does matter. There are many people who have gotten into depression because of rent. You are a better Christian if you live in your own house. If you serve God in your own house, you can lock it up and have a night vigil and not be afraid. You can move to a neighborhood that allows you to serve God acceptably. How do you say that does not matter? You can send your children to a school whose curriculum honors God and you are aware of it. Well, I've made my decision. I came as a midwife to help you make your decision. But by all godly means, make up your mind tonight. Even if you don't know your way out, tell yourself that in the name of Jesus, my children will not have to ask me a question tomorrow and say, when God was helping others, where were you? That as a man of God, one day, you will not get into the ministry of manipulation. God is trying to sanitize the church, partner with what God is doing, so that this money, money, money thing that has destroyed the church, we kick it out and serve God with integrity. But let me tell you an honest truth. If I stand here and I'm hungry and I'm not fasting, with the gift of prophecy on me, you think I will not say something about your life that I would transact it to meet my need. When I'm hungry and I'm owing and they are going to jail me tomorrow and I see that there's a million dollars in your account, you are joking. I will call you and say, stand here first in a special place. Let me finish with other people and I'll see you personally. There are many temptations that are resistible. The cure is to be empowered. Within the boundary of modesty, when your children are doing well, and I'm not trying to be sarcastic, when your wife is doing well, when your husband is doing well, you can stand with integrity and preach Jesus. Knowing that you will not drop the mic and have to go to jail tomorrow because you are owing in your rent. I'm praying for someone in the name of Jesus. May God who is called Ebenezer, the one who helps men, who takes away shame from their life. May that God help you, Ghana. May that God help you, Takoradi. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every man, particularly, the grace for structural establishment, that you will have enough to take care of your family and rid yourself of the temptation of compromise. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Sit down and let's wrap up, please. Thank you for your patience. Number six, I'll touch on it quickly. The decision to build destiny relationships. The decision to build destiny relationships. Let me answer a question that Bishop asked before introducing me. He said that there are a few preachers who had said perhaps they were trying to get me to preach once and maybe my schedule has not allowed. Why have I come here three times? I will tell you that. Number one, because I love Jesus. 
Number two, because I love you honestly. But number three, because of my relationship with him and his dear wife. Are you learning? Now look at me. If you have to use money to buy everything in your life, wisdom is not at work in your life. There are many things you will purchase in your life paid for by relationships. You are as wealthy as your relationships, not just your bank accounts. Are we together? There are many people today who are wealthy, but they are still grounded because they are not wealthy in relationships. Who likes you matters. Who hates you does not matter. Leave the naysayers. They are hating you does not count anything to your destiny at all. But who likes you? If you are Esther, pray that Ahasuerus will like you, else you will remain in Shushan. If you are Ruth, pray that Boaz will like you. If you are Abraham, pray that Abimelech will like you. If you are Lot, pray that Abraham will like you. Who likes you matters. Lot was not necessarily a wise man. So said his later decisions. But because he went with Abraham, everything Abraham had also came to Lot. Productivity is important, but relationships are a mysterious leverage. I have learned this in my life and may it be true in your life from tonight. Not every relationship is equally valuable. You have to learn. There are general relationships. There are seasonal relationships and there are destiny relationships. General relationships, be nice to all men, anybody you meet at all. Seasonal relationships, people who come into your life but there is a timing to their value. So receive quickly what they have to deliver before the time is exhausted. And there are destiny relationships. You fight to keep those relationships. You swallow your pride. For instance, if Jesus wants to leave your boat, kneel down and beg him to stay. Don't say it doesn't matter. If Jesus leaves your boat, what happened to Jonah will happen to you. Two men were troubled. The difference was who was in their boat. For one, Jonah was in the boat. He brought loss and depletion. They almost died. He suggested their survival strategy. He said, throw me out and leave. But for another person, Jesus was in the boat. Same storm arose. But because of one relationship in the boat, they were preserved. Who you carry determines whether you arrive. Are we together? Let me tell you the truth. When God wants to help you, he shortens the distance between you and a destiny helper. When a destiny helper holds your hands, he can bring acceleration to your life. John chapter 5 and verse 7. The man who laid down at Bethesda, the Bible says that man, when Jesus came to him after 38 years of suffering, he said, will thou be made whole? And the man said, I have no man. That was his problem. There is no relationship that can be a leverage to my healing. I have no man. I'm an anointed man of God, but I have no man who can speak a good word. I'm a great caterer. I can cook for kings. It's amazing that those who need you do not know you are the one they are looking for. So you will need to leverage on a relationship that has their ears. Joseph could interpret dreams. But who would connect him to Pharaoh? He would have re remained in prison there. But the wine presser was the lynx person. I'm praying for you. Whoever must show up in your destiny in this season and connect you to the next level of your life, I pray that God will send them speedily. I say it again to a receiver. May God send them speedily. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Please sit down. Relationships are powerful. I had the honor this year to be invited by the prestigious Harvard University to deliver two lectures in their schools. Not to preach, to deliver academic lectures. I'm not a professor. That's what relationships can do. 
I'm, I'm not saying this to brag. You have no idea how far relationships can go. One person's signature, please consider him. And that's it. There are people praying and sweating over visas, binding and casting demons, whereas the, everybody has ears. That means they were designed to be relational. What do you think God gave them ears for? What do you think God gave them hands for? The most difficult system, you can penetrate it through relationships. Somebody can like you and say, help this person. And because his father helped this person's father, is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Is someone learning? Please value relationships. Don't insult people and say it doesn't matter. I don't need men. All I need is God. You are being sincere, but you will be punished severely for that level of ignorance. When it has to do with the world of men, you need men. Even Jesus as a man needed men. My life has been greatly helped today, mercifully helped by God because of the ministry of men. Somebody who likes you can give a good word because of you. Ah, this is a great person. Please provide any assistance. In my own little way as a man of God, I have been used by God as a destiny helper. Ah, apostle, on your honor, please, what can I do for you? Is it this person, this person? Let me tell you. There are people in prison today, relationship would have brought them out. They didn't have a relationship. There are people today, there's, there's no job that you are desiring that a relationship cannot bring for you. And you believe me on this. Again, I pray for you. You don't need everybody, but the one person ordained by God to connect to your ministry, to connect to your destiny, to connect to your family for your rising, in the name of Jesus, beginning from this night, may my God allow for that connection. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Next time you are writing your streams of income, add relationships. If they ask you what are your streams of income, don't just say real estate, tech, relationships. Everything money can do, relationships can do, and can do it cheaper. It is your relationship with Jesus Christ that affords you the opportunity to be anointed and to serve the purposes of God. People are in hell today because of relationships or lack of it. People are with the Lord today in glory because of relationships. They chose to love Jesus. They chose to connect to him. Don't ignore people. Discern people as they come into your life. This woman, I see that she may look like an ordinary woman, but I've discerned that there is a grace upon her. She has the ears of many people, and you invest in the relationship. Don't be too proud to say sorry. There are relationships you should never allow go out of your life. It will cost you, the, the injury will be too much. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me now? my life today as I prepare to wrap up I imagine if I rejected Jesus such a priceless relationship where would I be now would you ever know about Joshua Selman imagine that I rejected my relationship with the Holy Spirit when I talk of relationship I don't just mean vertically horizontally anything that fights your relationship is fighting your potential for greatness beware of those who come to sow a seed of discord Someone who was there lifting your life and in one moment, they make you hate your mother, they make you hate your father, they make you hate your friends, they make you hate your destiny helpers. It's an attack. There are relationships you should never fight. I hate my pastor. Be careful. Be careful. 
they may not be perfect but be careful the connection is to your advantage they are not God but they represent his program are we together there are relationships that I maintain jealously jealously those relationships are a profound advantage to my life I'm not talking of parasitic relationships go and listen to my message the irrefutable ministry of destiny help us you are as powerful as those who have chosen to stand with you let me show you a scripture in this conference and then we'll wrap up it's a scripture the Lord showed me and it changed my life numbers chapter 1 I believe and verse 5 I like you to read as loud and as clear this is a secret to a man of God right now go ahead one to read and these are the names of the men that shall stand with you stop there read it again and these are the names of the men Ah, every time God sends you there are names of men who should stand with you stand with you in prayer stand with you financially it is your assignment to call them in the place of prayer there is no man on assignment who goes alone every man on assignment there are names hear me my dear sister if it is true that God has called you to run that business then there are names of men that should stand with you man of God you are alone in ministry laboring over everything because you do not know that there are men there are always men financial help us prayer help us comfort us support us no you can't give up you fasted too much you've prayed too much the rent issue would not stop you from going for ministry let's walk together this scripture changed my life when God showed me I'm not alone I have God by my side but there are certain men that God has brought to stand by me this is a word of comfort to a man of God don't give up in ministry there are men your assignment is not to look for them your assignment is to call them in the place of prayer that church building going about that church building just by using the y the x you'll be frustrated there are men already they may not be Ghanaians but they are men sent by God you can be in Ghana and they can be in America they can be at the Middle East the man that was sent to empower Abraham was called Abimelech the man that was empowered to to raise Lot was called Abraham the man empowered to raise Esther was called Ahasuerus. The man empowered to wipe the tears of Ruth was called Boaz. Have you found the man that God has placed to help you? These are the names of the men that shall stand with you. I know your father has gone to be with the Lord, but there are men that God has anointed to stand. I know your mother has gone to be with the Lord. You are an orphan, but there are men you don't look for them, you call them in the place of prayer. These are the names of the men, man of God, that shall stand with you. There are men ordained by God to stand with this ministry that you will never go down. They stand financially, they stand in prayer, they use their influence, legal influence, political influence. This is how the economy of God runs. Listen, I'm wrapping up. I hope you are learning something this night. For some of you, this right here is your prayer request for tonight. That you go back home and lie down and say, Father, you called me. Where are the men? Why is getting a visa difficult? Where are the men anointed to help me at the embassy? Why is it difficult for me to get a house with integrity? There are always men. Your advancement is at the mercy of the men. And the quicker you find them, the quicker you arrive. Is someone learning tonight? Look at this. 
right there as a gentleman on camera helping to capture this right there I came in and I saw wonderful protocol people as we arrived there were a team of people who received us so graciously those are the men anointed to stand can I tell you this every time you find the man anointed to stand you don't need to do explanation there is a connection if you have to beg people to stay if you have to manipulate people to stay they are strangers be patient you see let me tell you this this applies to any kind of relationship when you have not found people ordained to be in your life they will cheapen your value you will keep paying the price of maintenance let me tell you maintenance is costly especially when it does not connect try to put a BMW engine in a Mercedes Benz that's when you will know that maintenance is costly because the fundamental problem is that they were not supposed to connect are we together don't just see any rich man and believe that's the one sent to you and keep waylaying and harassing the person he will say remind me tomorrow remind me tomorrow you stay for 12 hours in an office he's not sent to you sir go back home and preserve your honor and say Lord where are the men who know the value of what I carry where are the men and one man can come into your family and say God sent me a family of four ladies and an old woman God sent me I'm not talking of corrupt and bad people genuine people sent by God and they will say their assignment is to make sure that all your children school to masters or PhD and get jobs and you say why are you doing this they say God sent me God sent me, God sent me. I found a few men in my life that were ordained by God to stand with me and I can tell you they have been priceless gifts to my life this is to everybody but let me encourage a man of God as we wrap up please go back and pray this night Lord I am tired of moving around begging and compromising there has to be a man sent I'm tired of compromises sent by God in the name of Jesus Christ let's stand the seventh and the final decision that you must make using the power of your will is the decision to be a blessing you must make up your mind according to Genesis 12 and verse 3 that I will be a blessing at the end of my life it will not be that I was a nuisance to creation the decision to be a blessing it says and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed in thee Joshua Selman in thee Bishop Asare you can mention your name in thee shall all the families in Ghana all the families in Takoradi that means there is an investment of the spirit upon my life that makes me a blessing I am not a curse I am not a nuisance I am not a liability I am a blessing by grace someone shout to say I am a blessing say it convincingly say I am a blessing as a man of God I am a blessing as a businesswoman I am a blessing as a mother as a father as a preacher as a brother I am a blessing the seventh and final decision that you must make with your life is the decision to be a blessing hold hands with someone by your right and left in my life be glorified, be glorified in my life. Be glorified, be glorified. You get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor. I just want to say thank you, Lord, you get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor, I just want to say thank you, sing it one more time, so in 
path of the just through the quality of their decisions should always be as a light that shineth more and more and more and more one prayer in 10 seconds I do the altar call and we're done for tonight father I decide that I will go forward I decide that I will be a blessing I decide that I will love you all the days of my life. I decide that I will be transformed. A serious believer is praying. I decide that I will find my assignment in life and destiny. I decide that I will take care of my health and my physical well-being. I decide that I will invest in strategic relationships. I decide that I will be a blessing to my world. Someone go ahead and pray. Ghana pray. Takoradi pray. You get the glory. You get the praise. You, you take the honor. I just want to say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Lend me your attention for one minute, everyone. Outside, inside, the many who are following online. You cannot end such a destiny-defining meeting without giving someone an opportunity to honor the first decision that I taught you and that happens to be the greatest and the wisest decision that any man can make in this side of God's kingdom. Hear me. You come as you are, but you do not remain as you are. I'm calling on someone who is saying, Apostle, whilst listening to you preach, the Spirit of God began to convict me that there is a need to make it right with Jesus. This is beyond a church decision. This is beyond religion. This is a call to a functional relationship with Jesus. You might be outside scattered among the thousands of people there represented, or you might be in the midst of this crowd here, or perhaps someone who is following by way of television, following from your home. Give me the honor of leading you to this Jesus, the one who's changed my life, the one who's changed our lives, the one who will change anyone. You can reject him. Remember, I taught you, you do not choose consequences, but you can make choices. You can make decisions. Let tonight be the wisest use of your power to choose, your will. I'm going to count one to five, and I'm calling on a bold person here who is ready to make it right with Jesus. You are saying, Apostle, I'm not ashamed. Not after what you have taught. Not after the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Wherever you are, if you're coming from outside, I'll request that you run. Once the front is full, you have to stand where you are. If you are in this place, as I count one to five, very boldly, leave your seat and come stand right before me. God bless you. I begin my counting now. Let's honor them as they come. One. God bless you. Come. Come. Oh God, you are my God. Come. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. Keep coming. And I will ever love you. Oh God, you are my God. Keep coming. And I will never serve you. I will seek you in the morning. I have learned to walk in your ways. For step by step, you lead me. And I will follow you all of my days. Someone is still coming. Pack already, let's encourage them as they come. You're coming to Jesus. Make it quick. Apostle, I want to win this war finally. 
God bless you my sister God bless you my brother come do not be ashamed this is a destiny defining decision he brought you to change your life he brought you to change your destiny doesn't matter what you have done or not done he's willing to receive you you can start afresh again step by step you lead me and now we follow you all of my days god bless you god bless you young and old male and female god bless you come nothing to be ashamed of apostle i want to come but i'm not sure if i'm saved can i join them please come there is such a thing as the assurance of salvation i'm working on borrowed time my apologies but this is an all-important decision it's the first reason for which we are gathered here tonight ladies and gentlemen please look at me those of you who have come to the front i want to thank you for your boldness i want to thank you i salute you for your courage thank you thank you ma thank you sir it pays it pays to love jesus it pays to know him it pays to serve him now here's what you will do for me i'm going to lead you to make a prayer a prayer of faith and zoom the camera on me one minute let me just speak to someone who is watching by television watching by internet we're here at takoradi ministering under the influence of god's power and by the spirit of god i'm speaking to you in your home watching by television tonight watching by internet or even watching a rebroadcast this is your moment to make jesus lord of your life it doesn't matter how powerful what you have heard is if you do not act on it you wasted the message the beauty of this message is that you act upon it by using this gift god gave you and with it receive the greatest gift he intends to give you tonight i want to thank you so much for those of you who have come let me please request that you lift your right hand as a sign of surrender to jesus and say this after me as loud and as clear as you can say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i love you with all my heart i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for my sin i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life i'm a child of god i go forward ever and backward never amen Father, thank you for these precious ones. They have declared your lordship over their lives. I decree and declare that the grace to live the victorious Christian life is released upon you this moment. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. And I declare that from tonight, you go forward ever and backward never in Jesus' name. Now, please look up very respectfully. Can I request that you follow the gentleman waving his hands? There'll be a group of counselors who will have a word with you very briefly and a prayer with you and then you're back to your seat let's honor them as they go god bless you <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the lord now please lend me your attention for one moment this conference continues tomorrow morning what time sir nine in the morning so nine we're here in the morning and then um the final service for my session would be in the evening uh, and then by the grace of God would use that to be a miracle service uh, we didn't have the time to minister to people because you needed to hear this today praise the name of the Lord now let me charge you go back home and get this message get it listen to it again and give this message to anyone you truly love you see someone confused disoriented tell them I have a gift for you from this conference here it is listen to it again for your edification for now may the Lord bless you may his hand be strong upon you
these decisions that you have learned as you act upon them the results follow immediately in jesus mighty name we pray give jesus a big hand clap and god bless you Thanks for watching Revival Time Hub. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.